an early arriving crowd. You like to see that coming into Ohio Stadium and a big one at that too. Well, I tell you, it was a Friday night arriving crowd. I think some of the people <laughs> slept at the game day uh, set and, and they were there early in the morning because we were right next door in the Blackwell and what a great crowd. They really came to yell. Brought them all in, 104 plus new record at Ohio Stadium. Mm -hmm. And you know, you mentioned game day, Kirk Herbstreit there. Well, he was our honorary captain, did a great job talking to our young people before the ball game. And it's just a thrill to have him back on campus. But Herbie put you in the hole there early. Well, you know, here we came out of the hole with the little throw, uh, first play of the game uh, to Michael Jenkins. He made a big play out of it. and, and uh, I thought we were off and rolling pretty well. 33 yards, that would be Craig Prenzel's longest pass of the day. We didn't want to tell him that on the first play, but uh, the Bucks still rolling here on their first possession. Well, here we are out of the shotgun and, and they dropped the ball off to Chris Gamble. We had a penalty right before that play, and so this ended up uh, not getting what we needed for the first down, so we had to step in with the field goal unit, and they provided the big three points. That's Mike Nugent again, and he keeps his streak alive. Perfect on the year. This one from 43 yards and a three to nothing early lead. Well, Mike's done a great job and he works hard at, at, on his technique and he wants to be a very good kicker and he's providing that for us right now. Washington State, first trip on offense. Jason Gesser, the quarterback, he drops it off a running play with the Bucks right there. Well, we did a good job uh, handling the run. They hit a couple draws on us, I think, at some point in time, but uh, really, I think they only ended up with 30 or 40 yards rushing. They certainly had an idea that you were going to come after them, and that's why the quick plays like these screens. Well, they did a good job with that, and they certainly throw and catch, but our people run to the ball. And there you see Matt Wilhelm and Rob Reynolds and Darian Scott out there and Dustin Fox. And uh, we do run sideline to sideline. Doss in there as well. And you throw the jump ball up there to their big receiver. Well, they threw the fade out there, and that's a tough one. He cut his split down, and, and uh, Richard McNutt had a lot of the field to handle, and uh, so they're up 7-3. 7-3, your first deficit, so you've got to respond to some adversity here. Well, and we knew that would happen in this ballgame. We knew we were going to be behind a little bit, and, and uh, Maurice Claret there behind the right side of the line, getting a nice gainer, and, and uh, we knew we were going to have to to come back after. I think we had a penalty that drive too and ended up having to punt. Fourth and two was the situation. Most important play in football here as you call it and some good coverage. Well, no doubt about it. But our guys did a good job snapping and getting the ball kicked and protecting and uh, they covered the field well. Washington State on offense again. Again, a running play. Yeah, they, they were going to have a tough time if they wanted to run any base runs uh, outside of a couple little draws that they, they leaked out of there. Our guys were on the job and, and uh, we'll we're proud of the way that we're playing run defense, and here we are blitzing them and, and uh, putting pressure on them. I think that was Kenny Peterson that forced that poor throw. Fourth down play, and that is correct. Peterson on the play. Good sportsmanship there, helping guess her up, but the Bucks take over on offense. Again, here you see Maurice Claret coming through, and well, he runs with low pads, and you know what's interesting about him is as the game goes, I think he wears on defenses because he pounds them. He certainly did in the first half, but uh, even more in the second half. We're still second quarter here, Lydell Ross. Nice mix-up of the backs here. Well, it was a good uh, play. We had our pony backs in, which are, are both uh, tailbacks in the game, and we ran a little uh, draw play type thing from the shotgun, and Lydell was excited there. And We've got to get him back to 100% healthy. He's got a little bit of a foot problem that, that we need to get healed real fast. Again, we got stopped on downs and had to call on Mike Nugent, and he delivered again. 36 run by Ross, 43 field goal by Nugent, and it's a 7-6 game at this point. Back on the defense here, and again, they're trying to run the football. There's Rob Reynolds in there, Darian Scott, C. Grant, uh, David Thompson, swarming all over the football. Now Gesser is going to get some more pressure as well, and it's Kenny Peterson again. You go Kenny Peterson on the sack, and tell you what, he's a good quarterback, and it was exciting to see senior Kenny Peterson and all the guys getting excited about making big plays. Back on offense. And here you see Lydell Ross there again and, and uh, running the football up there. And, you know, it, it's a field position game. When you're playing a battle like this, when our team's playing good defense and their team's playing good defense, uh, the people that make the mistakes are going to have the problem. And here we are throwing the football out and, and uh, Craig Krenzel finds Michael Jenkins on the comeback route and, and uh, we're moving the chains. 16 yards to pick up there and now back on defense the Buckeyes go. As that drive stalled, Washington State takes over. But the defense holds here, bends but doesn't break. Well, that's right. Simon Frazier and 
Kenny Peterson, and uh, I think it was Rob Reynolds on the stop here, and here they're working out a shotgun. C. Grant, uh, our defensive staff did a great job of having a little spy there on the on the empty set, and we blitzed him, and he had to throw hot. Then they had the mistake on the field goal, and that's a heck of a big stop for us. One of these linemen defensively is going to get an interception here at some point. Well, you know, <laughs> we've got to, told Coach Jim Haycock, we've got to work on ball catching drills or something, but they were where they needed to be, and just swatting those balls down was big. And you also see uh, that special teams play go awry for them. Uh, it could have easily turned into points the other way, the ball getting kicked around in there, but very important not to get points on the board against you. Well, that, that was huge for you know them not to go up a little bit more. And, and uh, you know our guys just kept playing. We didn't play a flawless first half, but we played with a lot of effort. And we just needed to go back in, I think, at halftime, take a deep breath and say, okay, what is it we've got to do better? When you talk about field position, the first drive, I believe it was a third and 13 or so, right before Mike Nugent's field goal. You weren't trying to get the first down there. You were trying to put it in position for the field goal because you have that kind of confidence this time. Well, that's right. And, and you know, the thing is, as we were going protection-wise, we needed to square away some things that they were doing that, you know, we hadn't maybe seen them do and so forth. And rather than go the, the problem of getting sacked or, or losing yards there and make the field goal even tougher. We just wanted to move the ball back to the middle, maybe break the play, because that was the same play that Lydell Ross broke for 33 yards earlier, so it wasn't like it was a poor play. Get it back in the middle. If we hit a big one, fine. If not, let's kick it through. 7-6 right now. Hanging tough are the Buckeyes. We're back with second half highlights. Night and day second half at Ohio State. We're That's what we talked about at halftime, and I think our guys knew that, and they knew this was going to be a heck of a battle, and now you had to roll up your sleeves and see who could slug it out, you know, in the second half and come out victorious. I mean, it's cliche-ish to look at halftime and say, well, you're going to make adjustments because you do every time. But it was night and day, second half. Some of the plays that they were running in the first half, the screens and the draws were working, and they didn't work in the second half. Well, you know, I think our defense just made a couple little things. Uh, I think we put a little more pressure on them. I think whereas maybe we were a yard away from the quarterback when he was throwing in the first half, we were half a yard away. and. He, kind of threw some blind balls and still did a good job. I mean, I have utmost respect for Gesser as a quarterback, but uh, I think our guys did a good job making adjustments and just came out and kept slugging. Great performances on the field by the Buckeyes. Great halftime while they were in talking about it. It was Hall of Fame weekend. Uh, that's right. Both the men's and the women's varsity O recognized their Hall of Fame classes with banquets last night and were recognized on the field. And, and here goes Maurice Claret. You know, we got the ball 91 yards away from our own goal line. And I think if, if you do a 91-yard drive to someone, you set the tempo of a half and that big run right there started a 91-yard drive. 44 yards on that play, and you get the crowd back into it. There's no question about it. And, you know, we started mixing up a little bit, throwing it in and out and, and making them play, uh, you know, the whole game a little bit there and, and making them get tired running after our people and, and uh, having to match up hitting-wise. Chris Vance turns a five-yard catch into a 14-yard gain. That's never, Huge. Huge. <laughs> that never hurts. And here you see no penetration. And when there's no penetration, you know, he's going to go out and break some tackles and split defenders. And, and uh, you know, Maurice Claret's a heck of a running back. And he loves the game, and he loves the Buckeyes, and he loves his fans. There's no question about it. That was an outstanding play. 20 yards on the pickup, and well, everybody in the house knows where it's going now. Well, that's right. You know, And, and uh, that's when you have a chance to, to be good is when everyone knows where you're going and you can still get there. And they did. Claret from three yards out for the touchdown, 13-7. to seven. Bucks on a roll in the second half. Crowd behind them and back on defense. And like you said, a yard away, not anymore. That's right. We were in his face. And Matt Wilhelm, what a spectacular athletic play. And he's such a smart football player. He read the boot and he knew there was a crossing route behind it and he went and made the play. We didn't cash in, uh, but we kept the field position in our favor. And, and uh, here, Craig Krenzel making a good decision. You know, we talked going into the game that we needed him to have a lot of plus yards rushing because that's what other people don't count on. They, they knew our tailbacks were going to have some yards, but uh, Craig did a good job getting some yards, and again, good field goal protection, good snap, good hold. Mike Nugent hits it through the middle. Exactly. Again, 45-yard field goal. Going back to last year's Michigan game, he's hit eight in a row. Seven this year, one last year. Okay, let's not jinx him now, Hogan. No, we're just we talking about he's got good technique, and so does Will Smith there, and, and defensively, we're getting after him. Now you get the, another pressure situation on the punt team, so something's got to lead to this. You know, when you're in a field position battle, and they know how we come and block punts, their snapper got a little anxious because we were, we were making him block in our scheme, and that made his snap errant. 18-7 with the safety and the free kick. The Bucks will go to fourth quarter action right now, and Maurice Claret 
again with a first town pickup. Well, that, that was Maurice Hall that time, the other Maurice, and it was good to see him uh, run the football in there, and, and uh, we've got some backs that we've got to keep feeding the ball to, and now you see Maurice Claret hitting it up in there. See, when his shoulder pads are square to the goal line, he punishes people. Tough to bring down, usually takes more than one. Fans still into this one. Craig Krenzel back, but this, I don't know, you know, option, bootleg? Well, you know, it, they were flowing. They're a good defense, and sometimes, uh, you know, when you play against good defenses, boy, I can't believe that wasn't a touchdown, but you play against good defenses, uh, misdirection certainly gives them a problem, and Craig did a good job there. Nobody goes down on the field here. Everybody is up as he takes it in from a yard out. No player went on the ground on that play. Yeah, I think they thought that was a practice play or something. I'm not sure, but uh, that was a key touchdown without a doubt and our defense goes back to work they're going to want to do over after the 25 to 7 is put up on the scoreboard short gain their defense right there david, david thompson. thompson you betcha that was good to see senior david thompson get in and make that play and he's a heck of a kid here comes the pressure mike doss coming on the pressure kenny peterson putting pressure darian scott finishes it off you just dream about those <laughs> as a defensive lineman he said he wants that to be on sports center tonight he might just get his wish buckeyes applying the pressure even more and Tyler Everett. How about that for a play. You got a true freshman in there, a true freshman picking them up. And, and uh, we played a lot of guys. A lot of guys got tested in a tough situation. Now we're 96 yards away from our own uh, goal, the goal line. And there you see Maurice Claret when he lowers his shoulder pads. And it's the fourth quarter. And he's been lowering them on you all day long. And our linemen have been pounding you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the kind of football team we're going to be. 16 yards on that pickup, and he's got a couple more in him here. He does. He's going backside there, and, and uh, you know, I, I just think his, uh, his wheels had run a lot of miles there, and he wasn't going to break that the whole way, but that was a huge gainer, and he had a huge day. That is it. 25 to 7, the final. Buckeyes, uh, after the Gatorade splash, you come off the field. Uh, a, a generally good feeling because a positive move forward again, I guess. Well, I think that's right. And we played a good football team. Mm -hmm. They're a first class team. Uh, they could very well win the Pac 10 Conference. Uh, <clears throat> it was a battle uh, on, in the trenches, both offensively and defensively. And uh, it was fun to watch our guys grow. Now we've got to grow even more because we're going on the road. Washington State is going to beat some people this year, no question about it. Craig Krenzel, um, you know, has beaten another team. His numbers, 4 of 10 passing for 70-something yards, nothing to write home about, but he doesn't beat himself. Well, you know, the number one statistic for a quarterback is did you win or not. The number two statistic is did you turn it over at all. And he didn't do either. He didn't do that, and he did win. We do need to throw the ball better. We're not going to become the team we want to be unless we execute the passing game. I don't mean just throwing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean throwing, protection, route running, and so forth. All right. We mentioned Darian Scott, another guy on defense, David Thompson.